Hello, welcome to the Wealth Transfer. We are in a great series known as the SDR, China's inclusion into the world reserve currency system as it leads into also the European banking system failure and what's going to happen to the dollar. So stay tuned. I'm Terry Saka, Chief Strategist, and I'm along with Dr. Charles Vance. Hey, Charles. We're so glad that you guys uh, took time to join us today, too. Not FDR, S <laughs> SDR. Strategic Drawing Rights is basically a, a code phrase for the IMF's currency. IMF, Inter International, International Monetary, Monetary Fund. Fund's currency which I contend in which I believe the elite system wanted to do all along is to make a global currency the dominant reserve currency and then nations go and buy the global currency and then do international trade and finance. I know what I'm saying is right and true. What we just don't know is the exact timing of it, but I can contend that when you start to see this data, you're going to feel that timing's close. That's why it is so essential we in the kingdom get our assets protected and positioned properly because these fiat currencies are going to hit in a reset when that global currency takes center stage. It's all by design because as I was saying last week, the central banks bailed out the last collapse in 2008. I contend this next big bailout has to come from the IMF, SDR. It's a brand new currency, pretty much. They could then print a few trillion dollars in obligations and then go and issue loans to stimulate the economy. But there's new rules. And that's what makes this interesting because those rules include China. And China and Russia and all of them in the East are dictating, as Charles said last week, it's about power and control. What does that mean to us? Our dollar loses tremendous authority, trade authority, financial trade authority, and buying power. And I know it doesn't seem like that today, but it's close enough. I would be making sure my hard-earned retirement wealth and savings is in a tangible asset and not in the banking system or in paper. Because paper can be burned Silver cannot. So you, you mentioned fiat, and I don't mean to laugh fake. about this, but yes. it just simply means fake. Yes. So when you when you pick up a piece of U.S. currency, the 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 Federal Reserve Bank even calls this fiat. Yeah. I mean, they right. on their website they call this fake. It's a note. Uh, it's, it's an IOU. It, it's, it's a loan it paper. It's It'd be it like is. me take it, tearing a sheet of this paper out, and writing an IOU to you, yep. and uh, someone that owes. A trillion. What does the Bible say? This. What does the Bible say? Trillions of dollars. You say it all the time. What does the Bible say? The the borrower is servant to the lender. Bingo. Yeah. And see, America. This is interesting because in America, our real constitution was established through the authority of the Bible and with Jesus Christ as Lord. Yes. The dollar in America's creation constitutionally was silver. Why was that so important when you get into this context? Because we cannot be servant or slave borrower to the lender because there is no lender. Money was real. And if they didn't have this, they couldn't loan out this. They could only loan out this or spend this to the tune of what they had here. That's why they wanted to get away from it because it limited government's ability to spend. But all through history, back to 600 BC Lydia, governments had done this. Right in the Roman time, for instance, they brought in the gold and silver coins, melted them down, added copper. Till the one day when all the coins were copper and they were worthless, the Vikings came down, destroyed Rome because they had no more money to pay the mercenary and the armies. Now, here's what's interesting. It's called Gresham Law. Those who saved the silver and the gold remained wealthy. Those who got in the copper in the fiat system in Rome basically got destroyed. They, they got wiped out. So this is very important because well, I want to show the graph again to explain this. The IMF reserve basket was made up of four countries. Now, the, the, explain to the people, the IMF doesn't have any currency. Not yet. In and of itself. Right. So it's using other countries' currencies in this basket that you're yes. talking about. Yes. Now, here's the basket. 
The green is the United States dollar, the blue is the euro currency, the red is the sterling English pound, and the white was the Japanese yen. That was the reserve currency system. Now the reason I wanted to show you that pie again is because you see the big green piece of pie? That was the US dollar. That's why we believed we had this American dream, we're a wealthy nation, because people wanted our dollar, because they needed it. Now I haven't said it yet, but we're gonna transition into this soon. We're gonna show you how our dollar became dominant, not just through World War II, but it was by the petrodollar agreement. Wait until you see how this all adds up. But the dollar you see right there in the green, I contend, and let me bring this up now, this is the new reserve currency pie. Yellow is the dollar, orange is the euro, blue gets into, uh, uh, blue is the yuan, the Chinese yuan, and then red is the yen. I'm sorry, I keep saying that, don't I? Japanese yen is red, the Chinese yuan is blue, and the purple is the British pound. Now, more than that, I contend that the 11% of the Chinese yuan blue piece of pie, it's not going to stay that small. I contend because the Chinese are far bigger and more powerful growing forward that that big yellow piece of pie is going to shrink and the Chinese are going to slowly dominate global finance and trade. They already dominate global trade. They passed the United States about a year ago. The Chinese have all state-of-the-art infrastructure and they're ready to assume global dominance and authority. And I'm not done showing you the connections. Wait till you see how they connect because I'm contending that pie where the dollar dominates in global trade and finance is going to shrink for the dollar. When that pie shrinks for the dollar, when this becomes less desired, we, the people of the United States, is going to, are going to have a tremendous problem economically. We're going to have inflation issues. We're going to have a lot more job loss because we're not going to be this power structure because they're not going to want these. And here's the bigger part of it. We've printed trillions of these around the world. And when they start coming home because they don't need them anymore, inflation. I can tell we're going to go into a deflation because of the baby boomers, but this thing is all over the map. And all I know is your buying power is going to be severely eroded. And we don't have to tell you that. College costs, house costs, insurance, gasoline, forget the gasoline, it's still up 100%, you know, from when it was only a dollar not too long mm -hmm. ago. Food costs, clothing, batteries, mm -hmm. everything you have to buy takes more of these, if you've noticed. But those who held silver have not only maintained their buying power over the last 15 years, they've gained. You buy more gas with silver than you did paper dollars, and it's just a phenomenal thing. It's about what you're holding gets you in return, and as you see this pie start to get divided more, you're going to see those dollars come home, and we in the United States are going to be in a lot of trouble. That's why I contend they're pushing the buttons on Russia because it's Russia who has been pushing on taking down the petrodollar, which gave the dollar its dominance. And this is a big deal. So I encourage you, get on that website. When this program's over, register for information, get educated, get a package. Give us a call at Cornerstone. They'll guide you through that process. It is essential you have an education and you protect those assets you have. Terry, production uh, and trade are two things that keep a country uh, in a place where they're financially stable. Is that yeah. correct? Well, think of I mean, all through history, that's all it's absolutely, been. Absolutely, because, yes. I mean, you can look at third world countries many times, yeah. and we, I'm sure you've visited several, we've visited several mm -hmm. as well, uh, and when they're not producing, anything that the world wants to buy, mm -hmm. uh, or when they're producing a lot less than what other countries right. are producing, then the quality of life there uh, goes way down or stays way down and never raises up. Well, think about the United <clears throat> States. What did we produce that was never around before that the world, basically Europe, wanted? Cotton, mm -hmm. tobacco. Well, two main things initially sure. in the colonies, I'm yeah. thinking, right? So they were, they had that cotton there, bringing that over, they're dying at colors. Mm -hmm. It was a phenomenal fabric. And of course, tobacco. So 
always countries that had something to offer. Now, we've evolved. We've been doing this 40, 50 years. We don't know what it means. But what mm -hmm. I'm saying is when these Chinese dollars, Chinese yuan, start dominating the world, as they are already, it takes away from somebody. Well, somebody I, has to give I, and take, right? I heard you say that they've, they've passed us in production. They have I'm, now I'm, passed us in, in the world's largest trading nation, yes, in production. Okay. Yep, you're so exactly I, right. You, you can pick up almost anything. This book is not printed in China, but you can pick up <laughs> just, just about anything and find that it's printed in China yes. or, or made in China. Well, and that's why. Uh, now, this image behind us is just a little more of a graphic I like to show because the reserve currency system was the British pound, the US dollar, euro, and Japanese yen. You see it right there. Mm -hmm. Then the Chinese yuan has been added. Now think about it. If you're a good old boys club and you're only four out of all the nations in the world, you're pretty powerful. Now the Chinese are in there. And I've been showing, we've done this about the Silk Road trade route and others. I'm contending the Chinese have been so sophisticated in planning for this moment. It's been going on for well over 15 years. You, what you're seeing right now is the new makeup of global trade and finance and currency distribution. And what's interesting about this image I like, gold is in the backdrop. Although gold cannot be used to back up these currencies, I contend China, because I know this through the refinery, I contend China has been stockpiling gold, so is Russia, and they're going to come out out of the blue and say they have more gold than Europe and the United States combined when the currencies collapse. What's that they all to, know what, it's collapsing. What's that going to do? What's that going to do in the world? It's going to show China is backing their money up with an asset mm. of credibility. So their currency is going to have more value simply because they have the ability to yes. back it with something. Yes. Now and, let me ask you this, Charles. Would you give me a trillion dollars? I could pay it back, right? Well, how, <laughs> Terry, how do I know you could pay it back? Well, because I said so. Yeah, exactly. What if I could say, Charles, give me a trillion dollars, and I will, in turn, if I don't pay it back, I will give you all my farmland in the West, and I'll give you all my gold. You're mm -hmm. like, that's good collateral. Sure. This is what we're talking about. And mm -hmm. I really believe, now, wait till you see the images of who's stockpiling the gold and who's not. And gold, mind you, is a tier one asset equal to U.S. Treasury bonds and gold. That's why I like silver, because silver is such a need industrially. Without silver, we cannot function. Every cell phone, TV, computer, electronic, medical device, medical equipment, satellite systems, you name it, bacteria fighting, you name it, is silver. Plastic. Plastics are made with a catalyst solution that has to have silver. Now they get to recycle silver from that solution, but they lose 30% of it every time. We had 12 billion ounces of silver above ground back in the day. Today, barely 700 million. Mm. I asked my refinery, I said, hey, if we needed to, let's say a big ministry came in with billions and wanted to own the asset instead of paper. How much could we feasibly get in material? He said, maybe 400 million ounces in the world. Be, that's how tight the silver supply is. The only reason the prices haven't skyrocketed is they're controlling and manipulating it through derivatives. I think it's a blessing to the kingdom because it's cheap. Get it before the real price is discovered. And I believe we in the kingdom have an, not only constitutional money, silver, First Amendment protected in the design we have, biblical money known as silver, I think we come out ahead because God gave us dominion over things of the earth, not fake paper because it's a dishonest weight and measure. Get educated. I urge you to get educated. Get a package of information. Be careful your sources of information. Get it where you know you can get some truth. And here's a good place to get started. Cornerstone Asset Metals is here to help you protect and preserve what you have worked hard to gain. For those of you who have IRAs to protect, 401ks to preserve, or cash in the bank. We would like to send you a package of information regarding the changes to the dollar and the challenges of our economy that you need to be prepared for. This package includes how easy it is to roll over your current IRA or 401k into a physical precious metals IRA for long-term protection of your hard-earned wealth. 
For those of you who have cash to invest, we can arrange to have your precious metals stored in a private vault or simply send it to your home. Call our toll-free number or register on our website now. Most people don't realize how simple it is to sell silver. Oh, uh, true. You, you remember yep. we played a little video? Uh, it's been a year oh, like ago. the chocolate bar? A guy's <laughs> offered a, a chocolate bar or an ounce, was it? Ten ounce bar. Ten ounce bar of silver. Yep. Uh, and there was a pawn shop yep. right behind him in the video. They could sell it, yeah. And almost everybody took the chocolate bar because they didn't know what to do with silver. And they could have bought hundreds of chocolate <laughs> yeah, bars yeah. by just selling <laughs> yeah. the silver. They could have given them out to the neighbors. Yep. But yep. there's a reason that this currency system, the banking system, doesn't want you to know how easy this is to trade, to That's sell. Very true. Yes. But you can sell this at a pawn shop. You can, you can. Coin dealers, pawn shops, refineries. There are so many places you it's, sell silver it's just if you so need easy. to. It's so easy. So easy. It's the real money, of course, is that's why. And that's why I think it's a big deal I, for actually, us to know. I actually saw a guy buying and selling this, had a whole booth set up at a flea market. Sure. And he had a scale there. He could weigh the silver. I mean, the guy was a, a silver dealer right at a flea market. Yeah. So it's very easy when you have this and need some currency. It's not like you have to wait for weeks or months to cash this in somewhere. Well, and especially in, your, in an IRA. Why are we stuck in IRAs? And I say that because that's where most Americans put their hard-earned savings. Mm -hmm. Why is it in a stock market or a bond market that is literally collapsing in buying power and value? Why? Because the probability and statistics that you're going to lose buying power there are increasing dramatically. Why would you want to be in a bank where they could shut off, literally lock the door, like in Greece and, and uh, the other nations that have had this? So this is very, very real. Silver in a vault in your IRA belongs to you. Nobody else has title to that. It's, not it's a, yours. Not a government vault. No, it, no. It, no. This it, is a vault that is managed by a custodian but it's yours, titled to you only, you see? So if the system does go through what I contend's coming, especially now that the Chinese are in this move, you have to have an, a level of protection. Do you really feel that confident in the banking system? I think you'd be surprised mm. if you knew the rules. Now here, what hopefully we help explain, the IMF is the International Monetary Fund, which is the West's version of a global banking you know, system. The East's version, which is the Chinese, and the BRICS developed something called the New Development Bank. It's the IMF mirror form. <coughs> Many people say, well, why are the Chinese coming to the IMF then? Purely because they're so smart they play both sides of the fence. They're doing the IMF just for global credibility for right this moment. They're setting up the system when the currency reset collapses. They're setting up a mirror financial system in the East backed by gold. And that's when we in the West are going to get caught with hundreds of trillions in debt and nothing to back it up. And this is why I contend the kingdom has to be smarter because it's, we're in a dishonest weight and measure in fiat currency and it's going to hurt us. Now, a visual, it's a cartoon, but this is a visual of what China has done by entering the reserve currency basket known as the SDR. Right here. <laughs> See that ball coming in? <laughs> They're bouncing the United States right out of the mm -hmm. equation. Now, why the United States get bounced out? We're powerful, we're strong. I'm saying because we have more debt as why. We are the world's largest debtor nation in the history of mankind. We have not only more debt on the books, our unfunded liabilities of Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid going forward is so astronomical to the tune of 75 trillion. We can't afford to pay back our debt. You see, it, this it, is it, why it, we're in trouble. It can't be done. It cannot be done. It's impossible. Something People has to happen. Just don't realize what a trillion dollars they is. They don't. Now you, we were talking during uh, the break that the Chinese are not only stocking up uh, gold, but they're stocking up silver as and, well. And I, and, yes. And encouraging their, uh, the, their the, citizens. the citizens to stock now, up Now, people silver. say, why would the Chinese want silver? Because it's bulky and heavy. I'm telling you why. 
They are the world's dominant manufacturing and trading mm -hmm. nation. They know without silver, they will never be able to manufacture the goods they're manufacturing because silver is in everything you have in your house. Now, they also own and control some 95% of all rare earth minerals that without these rare earth minerals, some of the most sophisticated computer systems mm. and switches would never work. So they're positioning themselves to dominate the world's natural resources for future economic power and control, you see. Here's an image of the new makeup of, of the system. There's a pie that's a little more graphic for you. Look mm. at that. There you go. The, see, I contend that, that is what's coming. The, on the left there, you're going to see the Chinese are going to be equal to the dollar and the other currencies are going to kind of break up in ownership. Here's the problem with that. If the Chinese take major market share from the American dollar, our dollar isn't worth as much, meaning our buying power will not be as good. We all go shopping. We all know everything we buy is far more expensive. It's, we're working harder and harder to buy the same things, groceries, you name it. Now, what, what they, happens? This is where the issue comes in for us. What happens to silver and gold when that when that happens? Because I really believe, I mean, it's headed that way. Everybody when, knows when it's When the headed dollar that way. loses tremendous buying power, silver rises in buying power value, you see? And I'll just real quick simply do this. They used to both buy five gallons of gas in the late 60s, 70s. They were equal, one to one. They divorced, they became just a paper note. If I sell my silver today, not only 50 years later, can I buy the same five gallons of gas? I could buy 10. I've doubled my buying power by saving silver. Those that save paper can't even buy a half a gallon. 10 gallons, a half a gallon. That's what happens when this takes place. Your ability to buy with what you're storing goes away. Now watch this. This is how I know China has set this up. Now, you can't see it, but maybe we could put it up and I'll explain it real quick. China has strategically set up currency trading hubs in very key locations. London, Germany, Luxembourg, France, Singapore, and Hong Kong. They have set up to be the world's largest dominant currency trade finance system. By doing this, they are getting ready to take down the dollar's dominance. And that's why we know. Now, some people say, oh, please, you know, and I said, no, this has been forecast for a long time. Here's an article back in 2009 out of CBS News. United Nations proposed a new global currency be created. Hence the IMF SDR unit, correct? Mm -hmm. This is right out of CBS News in 2009. Now, I'm going to end on this particular one because that was in nine. Look at this periodical known as The Economist back in the 80s. See, they knew when they came off the gold standard, this fiat system would only last for so long. We have printed such trillions of dollars we are getting ready to have a new dollar of some kind. I contend probably a new dollar that has to buy into the SDR global reserve currency, mm. but it's going to destroy our buying power and our ability to maintain wealth and have wealth if we're not in the right asset. Because if you're in silver, which is tangible, when the dollar does that, your silver goes up in value. So it's about protection and preservation. Well, look at this. This periodical is from The Economist, 1980s. Mm. Get ready for a world currency. Now, notice that's a phoenix. A phoenix is a rising from the ashes, a rebirth as it may. They already, and I'm saying they, the global elite, if you want to call them the cabal or the Illuminati, however many people try to use words, they are forecasting, once they came off the gold standard in the 70s, they knew this would only last so long and they would have to have a rebirthing into a brand new global currency. Now that's a phoenix. Around the phoenix's neck was the new world gold coin. And it happened to have a date on it that said 2018.
15. Isn't that great? It's right around the corner. <laughs> now, if you notice that Phoenix is standing on currency, all the fiat currencies, and they're on fire. Wow. So this was in forecast in the 80s, meaning they knew all along when they started this Federal Reserve note dollar you're holding today, they knew it would only last maybe 30, 40, 50 years, and then it would collapse and we'll start over into something brand new. This has been the global elite's plan all along. Now, what did they get out of that? Power, control, military prowess. Look who's, look what we've been doing, all the wars. Look at who, it's all about power. Who's in control? It was us. Did you notice we've lost it? You notice now we have no respect. We lose total global power and dominance. We will, in the United States, have a tremendous standard of living adjustment. That's why we have to have our assets protected, because if we're in the right asset, you're going to maintain your wealth and buying power while the rest of our nation won't. But we in the kingdom are listening because our eyes and ears are open. And this is why I like to show this, because it's important. Now, what are the Chinese doing and telling their people, as, as Charles said, right here? That's right. They're <laughs> storing it up. I'm in the refining and I'm telling you, they are storing it up. They know what they're doing with it. And here's another one I'll leave on this one. This is the world's global gold demand. China and India on the right have been taking up over 50% annually of global demand for gold. The rest is Russia, Europe, and the Middle East. Notice the United States barely is doing anything. Okay. That's not mm -hmm. good because they're faking it when the rest of the world is preparing to make it. So God bless you. And remember, register for information. After this show, go and register. Give us a call at Cornerstone and we'll make sure you're educated and protected. And we'll make sure to guide you towards preservation. As this takes place, we in the kingdom prevail. It's a wealth transfer from the wicked to the innocent. Are you on the right side of the fence? God bless you. Tell somebody about the broadcast. We'll be back here next week, same place, same time, for more wealth transfer news. Have a great week. Are you week. concerned about the security of your financial future? Cornerstone Asset Metals is here to help you prepare for the extraordinary times ahead by protecting and preserving your assets through silver and gold. At Cornerstone, the protection and preservation of your investment is our first goal. So we are here to serve you with honesty, transparency, and respect. Take control of your future by registering on our website at cornerstoneassetmetals.com or call us toll free at 888-747-3309. Call now, 888-747-3309. At Cornerstone, securing your future is our goal.